you cannot only have industry and not have university, right? So this is just like you had a table and the table would ha wouldn't have one leg. Hello, Krzysztof. Hi. Can you tell me how does a typical day at NYU look for you? Well, um, I think my day at work is very similar to the day of many professors at universities. Um, I divide my time between supervising my students, uh, reading papers, writing papers, having other meetings related to, um, to general university matters as well. Uh, I also attend talks uh, and I spend time thinking about my work as well. And what is the most viable thing for you at your work? I think the thing that I like the most about my work is that I get to supervise amazing students that uh, are extremely enthusiastic about their work, that are very clever and uh, passionate about the research. Um, and it's a, it's a great privilege to work with such students because it also gives me, it also reminds me that I have to, I have to uh, improve to keep up with the field and keep up with my students. Okay, so you know uh, the Polish education system and you know the United States education system. Uh, could you tell me uh, what are the most important differences when it comes to studying, for example, informatics? I think the most important difference between studying computer science, as it is called in the United States, and studying computer science in Poland is that uh, the emphasis on uh, emphasis is put in different uh, in different places so for example the students in the United States if we are talking about even if we are talking the best universities in the United States they don't get to study so much mathematics as a part of their curriculum uh, the students in Poland have very have really strong uh, foundations in, in theoretical computer science and mathematics in comparison to students in the United States um, on the other hand, students in the United States have more opportunities to start doing research very early. Uh, they also have a lot of opportunities to start doing internships very early, uh, to participate in student life, and to participate in student organizations. Um, so I think studying both at Polish university, the top Polish universities is great, as well as studying at top American universities is great, but um, the type of things that you learn are quite different. Uh, you said that mm -hmm. uh, students have a lot of opportunities to do research. Mm -hmm. uh, a statistical student from uh, United States, uh, when finishing his master degree, usually have, uh, has more mm -hmm. research done in comparison to Polish students. If, um, if a person from Poland wanted to do research, what would you recommend him or her to do? Yeah, that's correct. I think students in the United States get a lot more opportunities to do research as part of their studies. I think um, we do not have such a culture of starting doing research so early in Poland. I think probably the, there are several ways of achieving that um, that require a lot of initiative from the students. Um, for example, one thing that I can imagine that could help is just asking professors if they need help. If they have some research problems that, that, that a student could participate in working on. Um, there are also many opportunities in, there are currently many opportunities in industry to also participate in research projects. Um, and also, I think very often it is also possible in the later st stages of the, of the university studies at Pol in Poland to do internships abroad and then, and then, you know, there's no limitation to what kind of research you can do. Okay. One way of doing research is mm -hmm. uh, pursuing PhD. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to pursue a uh, PhD? Well, um, I decided to pursue PhD because I was really fascinated about machine learning. So 
that started in, uh, I think it was the third year at the university when I did my first course on machine learning. And uh, I, I had, um, had an exercise class on uh, K-nearest neighbors. And I was just absolutely, you know, fascinated. It blew me away. So I, I actually, so I was, uh, I was so, even though this is such a simple algorithm, it's, it's incredible how much you can, you know, how much you can do with, uh, with these, uh, you know, how much, how much you can achieve with even these simple algorithms. So I started studying a lot of, a lot myself, and I started reading books, and uh, I, I just couldn't stop. And uh, at the time when I had to decide what I want to do in the future. I decided I will try to pursue a PhD. Um, I finished my so I finished my master's in 2011. So I had to think about I have to start thinking about it in 2010. At, um, in 2010, there were not that many research groups in Poland that were interested in statistical machine learning. So I uh, really had no choice but to search for a um, some opportunities in other countries and. Uh, I did my PhD at the University of Edinburgh because it was already a familiar environment for me because I went there to, to do my master's and uh, there were many professors that I could imagine working with on a long-term project. Okay, so you said that uh, there were no opportunities for uh, doing machine learning uh, mm -hmm. here in Poland back then. Um, and many students actually also decide to go to different countries in order there to pursue, for example, PhD or maybe even bachelor. Um, my question is, what is appealing uh, in these universities abroad uh, for these students that they do, mm -hmm. apart from uh, lack of opportunity here in Poland? Well, I think actually, I think the opportunities in Poland are growing a lot. And uh, I think if I was deciding on whether I should stay uh, in Poland or I should go abroad to do a PhD, I, would, I wouldn't be able to make this decision very easily because there have been, you know, there, there are many interesting research groups uh, in di at different universities right now. Um, I think the appeal is, comes from thinking that uh, maybe the grass is greener on the other side. Um, but so there are some objective, there are some objective reasons to pursue research elsewhere. So of course, the r many research groups abroad are larger, they have more funding, they have more infrastructure, they have um, a lot of experience in, um, in machine learning research that we are only acquiring in Poland right now. So uh, if so, some, so the person who get to, gets to study at a university abroad often um, can often grow much faster. However, this also comes at the price of being disconnected from your own country, from being disconnected from your own family, and you know. And trust me, you know it's uh, it's always hard to live in a, it's always hard to live in a foreign country. So. There's a, I think there's a balance of, of these two things that everybody should, you know, everybody should consider and decide for themselves. Um, there is also another possibility mm -hmm. that students don't go uh, to, don't go abroad, but they can go actually to business. Mm -hmm. um, and what is uh, appealing for these students that they decide to uh, do in business? Well, I think. Business in Poland has closed the gap uh, between um, between them and business abroad much faster than academia in Poland does, um, because they you know they are more flexible, they have shorter finding cycles. So I think it makes sense that people in um, that many many good students in Poland choose to work in the industry. Um, But uh, you know, but you cannot you cannot only have industry and not have university, right? So this is just like you had a table and the table would have wouldn't have one leg. So you can maybe rearrange the legs that you have, and you make the table stand. But this is not a long term solution that you should pick. So um, there are still even though there are many opportunities in business, and I think this is great and this should be like that. Uh, we need to work much harder on developing 
opportunities for students to stay at universities. And uh, there are certain types of research that commercial entities will never be that interested in pursuing. For example, it's very difficult to imagine that there are very few, well, basically there are very few companies in the world that pursue basic research, fundamental, basic fundamental research in machine learning. Um, there's a lot of commercially applicable research, but not everyone is interested in this kind of work. So uh, we should consciously look at that and develop, try to develop both academia and industry. Okay, I see. But uh, to be completely honest, mm -hmm. um, there are uh, some companies mm -hmm. even here in Poland that actually uh, do research and mm -hmm. they um, they send their papers actually to mm -hmm. the conferences like NIPS. Mm -hmm. And um, so it seems that there is also a possibility uh, to do research at the companies. But from what I understand, you, from what you said, mm -hmm is that there are some kind of research uh, that they are um, the companies are, are unable to undertake. Yes, I mean, that is correct, right? So uh, companies are naturally more inclined into investing in research that will bring them profit. And uh, there are many types of fascinating machine learning research that might not bring any profit in a long time. So it is difficult to imagine that uh, it's difficult to imagine that they will that they will pursue this kind of work unless they have a lot of money that they are willing to invest, um, having in mind other things than day-to-day -day business, like building their brand, for example. But uh, I think especially in Poland, where there are many students that are very theoretically and mathematically inclined, uh, we should give them the opportunities to pursue the kind of work that they would like to be, they would like to work on. You said that the situation at Polish universities is improving. What can be done in order to improve it even more? Well, I think everybody should do a different thing to improve it. So. Um, the students should uh, show more initiative in reaching out to professors uh, in order to ask for research projects, to participate in research. Um, the university professors should also show more flexibility in incorporating the students into the research programs. I think the universities as, uh, in general should, uh, have, m should create more formal opportunities for students to pursue research as a part of their curriculum. Um, and outside of the university, I think we also need a participation from the industry. Um, so for example, there could be PhDs that were uh, joined between the industry and the university. Uh, there are, I think there, there's also a lot of potential at Polish universities to participate in research projects uh, that are commercially applicable in the industry. Um, but I think, uh, above all, I think we should try to build the culture of research and uh, it is a long-term goal that is going to take us many years. Okay, you said that uh, the university should uh, create formal opportunities for people in order to do research. What formal uh, opportunities would you recommend them to do? Well, so I think there are many ways of uh, achieving this goal. Maybe one of the ways uh, of doing this could be creating a special course where the students could take to do research uh, for one semester or for an entire year. Um, other things that universities could do would be, for example, to uh, create a course where the industry could come and propose research projects that the students could work on. I think, uh, to be honest, I think there are uh, multiple different ways that can be successful in uh, implementing this, but I think, uh, I think it, it can only happen if, um, if the university really understand, really understand that it's important to 
encourage students to do research early on and then and that you know you cannot have a successful research community if if you don't start if you don't start uh, res people research career very early you mentioned uh, that companies could uh, actually come to the university mm -hmm. and propose their own research mm -hmm. pro projects uh, for me it seems that uh, people at companies are are usually busy and don't have time to guide students mm -hmm. um, do you think uh, that it's actually possible to somehow overcome this issue or maybe mm -hmm. actually this is not the issue at all well i think it is true that uh, people who are in industry are often um, extremely busy with their day-to-day -day problems of running the company however I think they still have a lot of fascinating research problems um, and this kind of industry university work should happen in a collaboration between an industry, a student and also someone from the university, right? So someone, so I think there are one of the models that uh, is possible would be that the problem is, the problem is suggested by the industry but the project is supervised by someone from the university and I think this kind of solution has a lot of benefits because it, uh, it allows the students to do research, it allows the professor to, uh, to do more research and it also builds a connection between a university and business that will last longer than, uh, than, the, stu that, than, you know, than the student will study at the university. So I think this is probably the most effective way of doing this. Okay, Krzysztof, thank you for uh, the talk. I hope that uh, your dreams will come true and Poland will become a country interesting for people who want to do research. And yeah, see you next time. Thank you very much.